back again. Eric Backer is back, the naturopath. Thanks for coming back. It's 2020. It's going to be a great year for me and my partner and a lot of people. I know for you guys too. It's going to be a really big year for a lot of people. Right. We're talking about, we're doing a series on food sensitivities, which encompasses intolerances and food allergies. Right? So the question is, is it possible to treat food sensitivity? It is. It's possible to treat anything. It's possible to treat you too, but I'm not working at the moment. So you're going to have to treat yourself. All right, and that's why I'm glad you're watching these videos. So if you've got food issues, okay, especially if you know you've got food issues, now most people, if they've got an allergy, they know, they've got this feeling, okay? The important thing in life is to act on these feelings, especially if you're told not to be silly, all right, or don't think like that. But if you've got this inkling or feeling, you need to follow on through. So the first thing I want you to do, if you feel you react to some food in any way, now that could be emotionally, it could be cognitively, like your brain gets mixed up, or it could be physically. I don't care how you react. If you feel that, you need to have stopped that food straight away. You need to get your calendar hanging on the wall. Okay, what is it today? 12th of January, whatever it is, and you write down, I stopped cow's milk, or stopped eating, you know, Cheerios, or whatever. And then you need to stick with that for at least two, if not three weeks, with that food avoidance. Okay? Now, when you do that, you're not going to stop 10 different foods at once. You're going to stop one food. And especially the food. And if you are going to have a reaction to a food, whether it's both from a, you know, a, a non-immune or immune-mediated thing, generally it's a food that you like to eat and you eat it daily or you eat it a lot. So stop that one particular food for a few weeks and then see how you feel. If you really feel you've picked up, particularly towards the end of the two weeks, then you need to wait another week, maybe even two, and then take that food again. But this time, you're going to take the food two or three times per day for three days. All right, just small amounts, not like large amounts. And it could be like um, a slice of bread like twice a day. It could be half a glass of milk twice a day or three times a day. So small amounts, three days, and then look at the reaction that you had initially experienced. Did you get the same reaction back? Did your tummy feel funny? Did you have a sleeping issue? Or was your skin really itchy because you had that food? There's often a key symptom. All right? Now, if that came back up again, aha, you're saying, maybe it's that food. So now you stop that food again, completely. Again, two weeks. You do again. You expose yourself to that food again, okay? And this time you can step it up a little bit, take it three or four times per day again, two or three days. If the second time you get a similar reaction, I'm going to recommend you avoid that food for six to 12 months, so for a long time, especially if the symptom was quite severe. Or strong to you you need to really avoid that food so the stronger the symptom the more you need to avoid it and the more carefully you need to avoid it once you've avoided that particular food let some time go by and then see how other foods react with your tummy often you'll find you'll improve many things will improve your sleep will get better your energy will get better your weight might normalize okay because a food that's creating a problem with your body it's really like swimming against the tide isn't it you're going nowhere and you're wearing yourself out because what happens is, if it is a food allergy, okay, and it's sitting there, covert, you can't see it, your immune system is constantly shadow boxing, boom, it's constantly fighting with that particular food in a low level. So it's a little bit like a headwind. You're driving along, but there's a headwind. Not much, but there's a headwind. But all of a sudden, the headwind goes away. And, whoa, we've got a tailwind now. Hmm. You've been in an airplane where it arrives half an hour early because the pilot said we've got a tailwind. And everyone's going, yay. But that happens to the gut when the offending food's taken out. It's a tailwind, okay? And often you'll find that bacteria will start coming up, enzyme levels improve, deficiencies get corrected, patient starts feeling better. All right? Now, I've heard that many times. Just from taking one food out of the diet, it could be cow's milk, it could have been uh, gluten or bread, it could have been egg, okay? One specific food, and wow, what a difference it made. Does that person have to avoid that food forever? Likely not. I don't avoid cow's milk. I still have cow's milk in my diet. But I have Jersey cow's milk. Right? I have non-homogenized, pure, organic, like, you know, gate fresh Jersey milk. So Jersey milk has not got the A1 protein in it. It okay? hasn't got that strong protein. The Frisian cow milk's got the create the allergy. <clears throat> so, but I like it. I mean, what's a nice cup of espresso without a nice bit of frothy Jersey milk on top with some honey in it? It's just one of... One of the pleasures of life. So treatment is possible by 
understanding, you know, picking that identifying food and getting it out of the diet. But remember the testing is a good one too. So allergy testing, as I mentioned in a previous video, may be required to pick the, the key, one or two key foods out, but don't take them all out. Intolerance is a bit more difficult to treat, but as I mentioned previous, if it's non-immune um, mediated, your best approach is enzymes. Enzymes really work well for so many people with allergies and intolerances because they break food down to smaller particle size. They allow that, especially if you've got poor mucosal, you know, poor mucosal cells in your gut, you've got poor bacterial levels, you're not producing enough enzymes anyway. You need to support that by taking some additional enzymes in. It can make a massive difference. All right. So that's a little bit about the, where were we? Is it possible to treat? Check out the Canzita Restore product, which I made, the green label Canzita Restore enzymes and probiotics and used by many people now in many countries for exactly this, for food intolerances, because it'll allow the small bowel in particular uh, to work more effectively at breaking food down. It'll minimize uh, bloating and gas, and it'll improve the, the tone of the gut quite a lot. So that's the enzyme probiotic formula. That was it. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.